Are you listening? Nurse Bass. Beast Mode. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Nars Bass back with another video and in this video what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a brief overview of some hemodynamics that you may see if you work in a CVICU uh, and this is actually kind of particularly geared towards the recovery of an open heart surgical patient after having had a cabbage or a valve replacement, something of that nature. If we look at some of the basic things, just starting right off the bat, up here we have a heart rate, 86 beats per minute, okay? Just some of the foundational things. SpO2, we're satting 100%. Down here in the bottom right-hand corner, we're going to see the normal typical blood pressure that's taken via a cuff. You can see that it's cycling every two hours, so that's our cuff pressure. If we wanted to look at a different type of pressure, what we have here actually is an arterial blood pressure. This is uh, being given to us through an invasive arterial line, an intra-arterial line giving us a second by second reading of this patient's blood pressure. Uh, this could be an, a radial line, a brachial line, femoral art, uh, artery line, uh, different types of locations where an intra-arterial line can be placed, but it does give us a second by second reading of a patient's blood pressure, a lot more accurate and reliable than a cuff pressure. Now let's dive like a little bit deeper here. What are we seeing here with this heart rate? You're seeing all these little white spikes, okay? These are actually pacer spikes. Um, so whenever we're taking care of patients in the CVICU in the fresh post-op period, we actually have these patients come out of these uh, ORs with epicardial pacing wires, wires that are actually placed through the sternum, attached directly to the atria and ventricle uh, myocardium, and it gives us a way by which we can pace a patient should they be bradycardic, which a lot of times these patients are bradycardic whenever they come out of the OR. They've just had their heart stopped on cardiopulmonary bypass. We've restarted the heart. We've physically manipulated the heart and maybe put grafts, fresh artery grafts on these patients uh, to restore blood flow to hypoperfused myocardium or maybe valve replacement nonetheless. This heart has been physically manipulated. They're usually bradycardic whenever they come out since they're heart has been on ice. And so sometimes we have to pace them up. So really cool thing that we have here. And I think I've put like a little pacer box on the screen, how we're actually able to manually pace their heart to achieve a desired heart rate that we want. And why would we want to pace a patient up? Not just because we don't want patients bradycardic, but maybe you'll remember the old thing, cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. We're going to get to this cardiac output component here momentarily. But one of the ways that we can increase a patient's cardiac output, one of the ways that we can increase a patient's blood pressure is by increasing that heart rate. So we just said the cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. Um, now we'll recall uh, stroke volume is the amount of blood ejected from that left ventricle in mils per beat, right? Per beat. And heart rate is the amount of beats per minute. So the cardiac output is the amount of blood ejected from that left ventricle per minute in mils, this is 7.27 liters of blood ejected per minute. This, all of these little numerical values that we're getting over here in yellow is achieved by something called a pulmonary artery line, also known as a Swan-Gans catheter. Swan-Gans catheter. Uh, a pulmonary artery line, a line that actually is fed in through uh, the right IJ almost always. Uh, and eventually terminating in the distal pulmonary artery. And uh, we're able to use this invasive line to give us a lot of numerical values. Really, really cool uh, line that's necessary in patients whenever we're dealing with patients who have advanced heart failure or in the immediate post-op uh, period of an open heart surgical procedure. So <laughs> cardiac index here, this is another very important one that we look at whenever we're looking at these patients. Cardiac index is pretty much the cardiac output for a patient taking into account their total body surface area. So this here is the total amount of blood ejected from the left ventricle per minute. And then this is more specifically taken into account for patients whenever we're looking, you know, patient specific, their specific body surface area. We also have things such as a pulmonary artery pressure. If you didn't catch my video on uh, pulmonary artery pressures and why we use nitric oxide therapy in patients, be sure to check that out. I may leave a link in the description down below, but this is actually so we have a blood pressure in our systemic body, our systemic vasculature, systemic blood pressure. This right here is the blood pressure specifically in our pulmonary vasculature. It's a really important value that we take a look at. You know, if a patient has pulmonary hypertension, okay, pulmonary hypertension, 
we may see these numbers going up 50s over 30s, 60s over 30s, 70s over 40s. These patients have increased pulmonary high, uh, blood pressure, therefore they have pulmonary hypertension, and maybe we need to mitigate that with something like nitric oxide. But it's just something that we take a look at to give us an idea also of how well that RV is performing. Nonetheless, I'm not going to over, overburden you with information. And then also off of that pulmonary artery line, we are also able to get a patient's temperature right here, 36.3 degrees. And uh, yeah, a really cool invasive line, this pulmonary artery line, super cool. A lot of wonderful benefits uh, from being able to use that. And one of the numerical value that we haven't really touched on here is this one right here. This is our CVP, our central venous pressure. A really important uh, hemodynamic value that we use also whenever we're taking care of these patients. So this is measured off of a central line, a CVC, central venous catheter, primarily at the cavoatrial junction. Hopefully we put a little image up here on the screen to give you an idea of what we mean by that. But basically the junction right there where the superior vena cava meets the right atrium. That is the specific spot where we primarily get our CVP, our central venous pressure. And what is this? This is pretty much in a direct reflective value of our volume status, of our preload. Okay, remember that. This, this is why, guys, whenever you're studying in nursing school and you're discussing these hemodynamics and these basic things like cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate, and we're talking about what are the things that affect our stroke volume? Well, our preload, our afterload and our contractility, you'll remember these things, um, they actually come into play in practice. So don't, don't think that what all this stuff that you're learning about now is nonsense. Understand that what you're learning now is actually gonna be applicable in practice. And as we always say, one day patient lives will be in your hands, baby. So make sure you're studying like it. Nonetheless, CVP, central venous pressure, Primarily, it is reflective of our preload, and uh, this is pretty much your volume status, okay? So how, how uh, intravascularly bulked up, how much volume do we have in our patient? Uh, this is something that we really look at also whenever we're taking care of patients. So we could go further. If you guys would like, let me know down in the comments below. We could go further in discussing some different patient case scenarios whenever we're taking care of these fresh post-op open heart patients. If we started to see an increase in our pulmonary hypertension, why might we then see an increase in our CVP? You know, if we started seeing uh, increased hypertension in a patient, you know, maybe I don't have it here, but there's other hemodynamic values you can get from a pulmonary artery line, such as your stroke volume, such as your systemic vascular resistance. How is our systemic vascular resistance the same as our afterload? All these types of things that we could discuss a little bit further, a little bit more in depth should you guys want to. But nonetheless, I just wanted to do a brief overview of some basic CVICU cardiac hemodynamics specific to the open heart surgical patient population. I hope that you took a little bit of benefit away from this word vomit. And um, yeah, let me know that down in the comments. How did you feel about it? Did you learn anything? Leave a thumbs up if you did. Share it with a friend who you may feel would benefit. And if you're not subscribed, please do so. I'd love to have you here. Um, yeah, we're putting out content to motivate, uplift, and inspire you to be the best damn nurse you can be. I'll see you in the next one. Grind on.